we're now going to take a look at how to evaluate the strategic performance analysis that you've just completed. Now this is going to be covered in two different tabs on the spreadsheet. So the first tab, as you can now see, is populated. And this tab is called process analysis, and that's the one that we're going to talk about to begin with. That now looks like this. If we take a look down any one process, you can begin to see how well that process is meeting strategic requirements. So in this case, if we take a look at logistics, we can see that it is performing at a C or A level, which isn't bad until I begin taking a look at that in strategic context. In this case, a C on its level of support to more passengers, because that's a medium weighted objective, earns it a yellow. A C on this one, a low weighted objective, earns it a green. And a C on this objective, on time flights, which has a high weighting, it turns red. So we can begin to reveal the strategic performance both horizontally and vertically. Now, the horizontal one is interesting because that's typically invisible to the organization. What do I mean by horizontal? Let's take a look at, for example, C1, low ticket price. What we see is that strategic objective, although it's highly weighted, all the processes that support it are performing at an A level. And therefore, I feel pretty confident that our strategy and processes are aligned. There's a high probability we'll achieve some level of strategic success. On the other hand, if we take a look at another process, let's say reduced turnaround time, also with a high weighting, we can see that, in fact, it's at high risk because although all the processes are performing at least at an acceptable level, because of it now being a highly focused objective, that's not good enough. And that strategic objective is at risk. That horizontal view is typically invisible to organizations. And that's one of the key things we're driving towards with this process analysis, how to uncover those invisible aspects of performance that help the organization see opportunities to perform better. So now, what we can also do is begin to give each of these strategic objectives a score. So if we score them horizontally, across, we create a chart that looks like this. Where do you find that chart? Well, once you finish taking a look at the process analysis, we need to go to the process analysis tab, which is the second tab on the spreadsheet. When you go there, that's where you'll see the chart that we're about to take a look at. So the analysis looks a bit like this. If we take a look at any one bar, the total height of the bar represents the level of process support that that strategic objective requires in order to be successful. Now, it's important to understand that this chart, the scale is kind of strategy points. If you remember, what we've done is multiplied the importance of the strategic objective by the maximum score in A that you could receive on every single objective that touches that particular strategic objective. So just think of this in terms of the relative height across the bar is more than the absolute value of the points. Now within the bar, there are two components. The blue element describes the current capability of the process. And the gold part represents the gap between how well the process is currently performing and what's required for strategic success. Now, it's important to note that in many cases, the process was designed with the best of intentions. But as the strategy needs and requirements have changed, the performance level of that process needs to change as well. And if it hasn't been continuously improved, the process gradually degrades with respect to what the strategic objectives in the strategy model require. So if we take a look at the overall evaluation, we see a couple of things. One is we're concerned about the relative size of the gold gap. Obviously, when we come to the next section and we're looking for opportunities to invest in process improvement, we're probably better off investing in this strategic objective, I1, reduced turnaround time, because it has a significant gap compared to E1, focusing on redesign. So it allows us to get aligned about where we invest. Now that might seem a bit sim silly, but just to be clear, we stay in the process analysis tab, but if we scroll down, we can now begin to move down to a chart that takes a look at our performance by process. Now it's important to note that in both these charts, you do have the opportunity of changing the font size to something you can actually read. Now, 
The right font size, of course, depends on how long your wording is around each of the process names. So in both the process chart and the strategic objective chart, feel free to adjust those so that it becomes more usable to your team. Now, let's go back and talk about how we analyze this. Now, this obviously triggers the question of which processes are performing and not performing against the strategic intent. To do this, we should be able to add up the score down the columns and provide you with a chart that looks a bit like this. Now, the interpretation of this chart is similar to the one that we just looked at by strategic objective, but now we've summarized the data by process. Again, the total height of the bar represents the performance level that we are expecting and require from this process in order to achieve strategic success. To avoid confusion, we've changed the colors of the bars. The purple portion represents how well the process is currently performing, and the gray portion represents the gap between how it's currently performing and how you need it to perform to achieve strategic success. Again, this provides some a strategic overlay on viewing the performance of the projects, which will come in useful later. So the summary of this is we can begin seeing our overall performance by process uh, either by using this chart and looking horizontally or looking vertically. At the same time, we can produce a chart that shows us how we're doing by strategic objective, which is summarizing this horizontally, or how we're doing by process, which is achieved by summarizing this by column.